Okay, we're back with the continued part two episode of yesterday. I'm still here. The guy tells me, how come you're Jewish? I said, excuse me? He says, you heard me. How come you're an effing Jew? That's what he tells me. There's not a lot of people in this place. I mean, maybe six, four, a table or two behind us, me and him at the bar, two girls and and the bartender, and that was it. And I look at the guy and I take my finger and I run it down the bar between us very slowly. I says, you see this line over here? I tell him. He says, yeah. I says, look past it again. And your brains are the new wallpaper in this effing place, I tell him. That's what I told him. One line. You look past that line, I'm going to blow your freaking brains out. They're going to be the new wallpaper in this place. And I didn't elaborate. I didn't say it the second time. I didn't explain what I said. I said it once, one line. And this guy went quiet very fast. And I'm 20. He had to be older than me, 40. I don't remember. You're talking about almost 50 years ago. 42, 43 years ago. The guy didn't say another word. He looked back on his side of the line. He did not cross over the line. I had my money in front of me. I took my money. I pushed it forward to the bartender a quarter. I says, can I get change? I need to make a phone call. In those days, the phone call was a dime. And he gives me two dollars, two dimes and a nickel. And I pick up the change. And I do whatever I did with my cash. Maybe I had $8 on the bar. I left two. I kept six, whatever it was. And I very slowly, very deliberately walked over to the payphone, which coincidentally was right by the entrance to the place. It was right where you walked in. And when I got to the door, I ran. I ran. <laughs> Georgia, it's pitch black out there. There's no street lights. There's no. You're on the highway in Georgia at night. I get into my car. I'm, at, <laughs> I'm huffing and puffing. I have a, at the time it was a 1971 AMC Hornet hatchback wagon, okay? And the year was 1981, 10-year-old car. It was like an AMC Pacer, but it was the station wagon version in baby blue. And I said, please let this thing start. And I start the car and it kicks over and I go into reverse and I'll get the hell out of there. And I'm screeching out of the parking lot, and I drove to my house. And that one was over. And I says, okay, good thing I know how to talk a little bit, because you don't want to get involved with these rednecks. They'll kill you. The last story, we told the one about Boston. We told the one about Evil Knievel. We told the one about the other bar in Georgia. And then I happened to be in Maui in Hawaii, and I'm by myself, I had a friend back in the hotel. And for some reason, I end up in my little mini renter car with four huge Samoan guys, or five, excuse me, Samoan guys. I don't even know how we all fit in the car. In the time, they gave you like a, a Nissan Datsun B210 or something. Okay, how we put four in the back and one in the front, and, and we drove, and okay, stop here, they tell me. And we were doing some kind of transaction, the details I don't need to get into at this time. And these guys uh, were giving me a hard time about the transaction. And I said, well, listen, if I uh, can't get a better, you know, I'm not a buyer. You Samoans, you know? These guys carry around machetes to cut open their pineapples. And um, what happens? I turn off the car. I get out of the car. Now I'm standing on a bridge in the middle of freaking Maui. And there's five Samoan guys get out of the car and surround me. Again, at this point in time, I don't know how old I am, 24? 
32? I, I don't know what year it was. I know who I was in town with. And I turn around and I look at these guys very, very slowly. Looking at each guy right in the face. I said, let me tell you boys something. You think you're a bunch of tough guys? I'm from in Brooklyn. I says, you want to have a fight right here on the bridge? We'll have it. Probably you five are going to win the fight. I'm going to lose. But before I'm done, three of you are going to be dead. And I look them over again, one by one. And then I act like uh, Cosmo Kramer. Now who wants to make the first move? <laughs> and these five guys look at each other they look at me and they turn around a few man a few and they start walking off the bridge and all I could say was thank God I'm from Brooklyn so what's the moral of the story over here the moral of the story is if we came from Brooklyn, we came with a little bit of blessing. We came how to understand street smarts. We came how to talk tough. Hopefully we came with the understanding, the common sense, to know when to use it and when to run. If they're in the street and I'm in the car and they're not anywhere near their car and they're not going to catch me, it's better off not confronting them. It's better off driving away as fast as you can and making as many turns as you can so that they can't track you, they can't follow you. But if you gotta go face to face, what has worked for me in my life and kept me alive till this moment is I never backed down. I never showed fear. I may have felt fear. I may have felt fear deservingly. I was a skinny kid. These were big guys in each case. Okay, evil can evil, forget about it. The other guy in Georgia, everybody in Georgia has a gun. I had a gun. But I need a shootout with this idiot in the freaking parking lot. And Boston, forget about it. The bathrooms are all full of pipes and porcelain, and they start smashing your head against the wall. You ain't going to last too long. But I talk tough, very tough. And if you got to go after this episode, the two-part episode, by the way, and you got to go, today is July it's going to be, for this episode, July 7, 2022. Uh, so you look for the July 6, that's part one of this. If you got to go after you watch this and practice in the mirror, talking a little bit tough and acting like you could instill fear in others, you have to convey a perception of, of potential rage that these guys never saw anything like in their life. And that's what saves you. I don't know, in a physical altercation, I don't know anybody who wouldn't be scared to be involved with me. And today I'm 62 years old, everything hurts. What the hell am I talking about? But you know what? I'm scared of me. Because if I want to make that impression, it's frightening. And it's not I'm talking like a tough guy, and it's not I'm talking like I'm proud of it. It's a defense mechanism, and for some people you need it. You just need it. One time, I got followed by the windmill in Long Branch by a couple of these punk, redneck, local hick guys that were just looking for someone to mess with. And to tell you the truth, I had a few drinks in me. I was just walking around the corner where it was a little dark and private so that maybe I could use the uh, non-existing bathroom. I was going to take a leak. And all of a sudden, hey, man, you got a problem, you got a problem. I'm surrounded by four guys. And who shows up but the old man from the windmill with like a sword, a machete knife in his hand. And he says, you boys want trouble? Why don't you leave this man alone? He saved my life. He saved my life, this guy. Because I don't take hits too well. well you're you're going to hit me? Uh, I'm going to have a problem. I'm not built for that. <laughs> <laughs> 
And if this man ever catches wind of this episode, if he's still alive today, if he's still in the windmill today, he saved my life. And he didn't have to. And God bless him for doing the right thing. And I'm done. This is Charlie in the morning. I'm not looking to tell people go engage in violence. I hope you don't get the wrong message from this double episode. I hope you get the right message. I hope you never have to utilize it. And I hope if you have to utilize it, it's effective. And thanks for tuning in.